Hello and welcome to the gun shop. Today we have the 691 Black Edition Sporter. Um, something a bit different, certainly. Um, this gun retails at 2,100 to 2,200 pounds is their minimum suggested retailing price as of now. Uh, so it's quite an expensive gun, certainly, for what it is. What do you ha get? Um, so let's start from the back. We have a microcore Beretta pad, and a nice little feature they do is actually put a little orange spacer in. Really nice, actually. That's quite cool. Well overdue in guns to have just little aesthetic things like that. I say we've been doing it in lots of other things for a long time, but just little touches what make a gun. You get grade two, grade three wood. Nothing too saucy, certainly, but a nice bit of wood, something that can certainly float your boat. Moving on, you have. A black action, hence it's called the 690 black, with some kind of odd, but you know, it makes it again, it's a nice little feature, it goes with the orange at the back, you have orange in lead, 690, a line, and the name Beretta. Uh, what you like this, I like this, because you've got a real nice mixture between gloss and flat black, just kind of, kind of a nice thing to be honest, um, very aesthetically pleasing, and again you've got a nice gloss, properly blacked trigger next to a flat black trigger guard, which leads us onto the barrels, which are also flat blacked. Um, aesthetically awesome, certainly. Also cuts down glare a lot, uh, which I've never honestly had a problem with. You know, occasionally when shooting side by side in the sun or something, the rib will glare. But every rib now you'll find will be anti-glare, more or less. Um, but the barrels of anti-glare, I honestly think they've done it more for aesthetics and maybe a pathetic selling point, but it is mostly because it looks awesome. They used to do this on the uh, the old six, oh, I was about to say something else then, uh, the six, 8.2s and the 680X traps, everything were flat black. They did the 686 sporting in a flat black at some point as well. It's quite nice. You've got vented mid rib, vented top rib, and they come with the Optima HP chokes. Um, extended, full set. That's quite a nice feature. Orange bead sight, no mid bead being a Beretta. Rounded forehand. The action is not the same as a 680 action, unsurprisingly. This is a 690. I you know, built on a 690 action, 692, that sort of thing. It's actually wider than the 682 ever was, which is this sort of is the, the upgrade from, I suppose. It's 1.3 millimeters wider, um, which is actually carried throughout the gun, which gives it a more substantial feel in the hands. Really, really nice, actually. Um, kind of a bit chunky, a little bit more DT10 esque, DT11 esque than the 680 ever was. Uh, puts it into a slightly higher market. You have a rubberized top lever. Nice on the thumb, certainly nice on the thumb, uh, especially on a cold day, how uh, strange that sounds. It's not harsh, it's never going to cut you or anything like that. The only thing I would worry about that with this is probably uh, longevity. How long is it going to last? Nobody knows. Yes, they've been out for a couple of years now and there's not that much wear and tear. However, I've seen some of the 692s that first came out with this rubber top lever and the ones that are getting used heavily aren't wearing well. However, it's not going to be an expensive part to replace, so don't let that put you off. Barrels, steelium barrels, I should say that, steelium, uh, it's because they forge helium into the steel when they make them to make them lighter, that's a lie. Uh, they're just a, a slightly lightened barrel process which give you a slightly better balance of gun, sort of allows you not too much of a front heavy gun for a gun with monstrous big extended chokes hanging out the end. Really nice safety catch actually, very big, not particularly exciting but very crisp and elegant by comparison to it blends in with the gun, it's quite cool looking. Laser engraved checkering, uh, so yeah, this is the smooth stuff as you get on the Sporter, so you've got no hard angles there. And the gun actually aesthetically flows very, very well. So there's something on the inside that's probably worth showing you on this gun that makes it separate and different to the 680 series. Something that I would deem quite important. Uh, the forend here, as you can see, has a spring in it. Most guns are tightened or will feel quite loose without the forend on. Although, you know, when they're closed, they will be tight. That feeling of sort of the, the tightening and clo the, the tightness, I should say, when the action is opening and closing, is sort of done by pressure on this, the forend loop from the back. And that actually is what pulls these two bits together. On a lot of guns, as you know, that when you shoot it a bit, it starts wearing out um, and it will start opening and closing with a bit more ease. On this gun, as you can see, the way that actually clips onto this the forehand loop there is sprung loaded. And so there should be a fairly constant pressure there. It's also replaceable, so it should then be able to be filled like new. It does, however, 
as a bit of a downside to take a little bit of getting on and you can feel when that hooks over as you can see it's not a standard straight line but actually it comes out and in so that's where you lock into and that spring gives you tension on the receiver this gun so and they will always feel very similar to the day they're new because you've got that pressure pushing back on the action Again, these guns are, haven't been out with this design for a massively long time, however, it would be unlike Beretta to release something that wasn't fully tested. However, I think this is one of my favourite parts about this gun in terms of intelligent design. Although I'm, you know, personally disposed to, to other brands and I don't dislike that sort of sloppy feeling, I really like the idea that your gun will always feel crisp, tight and usable. Also, you know, the drawer, everything's just a bit... It's well designed. The wood to metal finish isn't perfect, but what do you expect for a gun that has very little hand finishing off it in the grand scheme of things? For me, what I like about it is the, just the increase in size. It feels the hands just that bit better. And I know it's only 1.3 mil, but it doesn't feel like a 686. The 682 was a lovely gun, but again, they, they relied on big parcels and stuff to fill your hands. This by nature, although it slims down quite a lot, suddenly feels, especially in your forehand, just a bit more substantial. Handles very, very well. Looks amazing. However, don't you just wish you bought the 692 Black Edition? Probably. However, you know, you're saving yourself well over, well, saving yourself a thousand pounds for very little. I'm not really sure if there's a thousand pounds of difference into a 682. I understand you have the balancing system and a few other little bits, but is that worth a grand when you could just get this rebalanced? Not that you particularly want to out the box, but you could balance it how you want for very little at your local gunsmith. Altogether, really nice actually. Um, a nice improvement perhaps on the 682. Maybe improvements wrong word. A nice change from the 682. Something a bit different. Very nice. I like it. I've got a couple coming in. Whether you know they're going to stick with this for a long time, they don't tend to sort of pick up and drop their black action guns fairly quickly, Beretta. I say quickly, quickly in the grand scheme of the history of Beretta, you know, they'll last a year or two years and they'll drop it. We'll see how it goes. Very competitively priced at that sort of market and um, just a nice, different looking clay gum. Yeah. Lovely.